Berlin. So let's start with uh, with continuous organization. So so I'll, I'll do like three parts really. Like the first part, I'm gonna come back to why it is important that we reinvent organizations in today's world, um, and then. I'll, I'll continue with explaining like more in detail how does continuous organization work because it's a bit tricky, especially if you're not in uh, in crypto full time. Um, and finally, like what are the next steps and where we are right now in in, in uh, developing the concept. So the big the big problem that we try to tackle with continuous organization is aligning stakeholders' interest in an organization. This is something that is hard to do. Basically, here's why an organization is successful. An organization is successful if it has this combination, like an inspiring idea, the right financing, a very strong, uh, strong team, a healthy governance, and a bit of luck or even a lot of luck most of the time. So here, if everything goes fine, then you find product market fit and, and you reach a reputable uh, business model. And so you get more money, more money gives you the, the possibility to hire better people and more people, and these people uh, makes you more money. So that's the, the basic idea behind uh, uh, the success of an organization. The problem is that this is a very delicate balance. It's a very delicate balance that can go off balance very quickly. Why? Because behind all this is people. And these people have different interests. So you have the, it's a mix of the entrepreneur, the investors, uh, the employees. And in the digital era, there's even a new player under the game is the community. Because right now, like most of the, of the internet startups, let, let's put it like this, or, or companies in the digital era, they rely a lot on their community, like Uber, like Airbnb, etc. And so all of them have different interests. So, so obviously, the investors wants to max maximize return on investment while uh, minimizing his risk. The entrepreneur wants to solve the problem without dying in the process. The employee wants purpose and, uh, and good compensation. And the community would like to be financially rewarded and build long-term wealth. And so today, we say, OK, very easy. Like We're going to create a company, and we're going to align everybody's, um, everybody's interest using shares. So the, the founder get, gets common stocks, the investors preferred stocks, and the employees stock options. And the community, unfortunately, today, uh, like it's nothing for the community. And the idea is very simple. The idea is say, let's, let's grow the pie together. We'll, uh, our shared work will help us grow the pie, and we'll go from a very little valued uh, company to a, a, a massive valued uh, company, and everybody's going to be happy. It's not that easy because, unfortunately, it's not because you have a big pie that you have money. Like at one point, you need to transform this big pie into money. So you have you, you need liquidity, and and liquidity is a big problem because without liquidity, what happens? Then the entrepreneur can lose everything at any time uh, because his shares are worth nothing. Uh, the employee stock options also are worthless because uh, as long as they cannot sell them, they they have no value. Well, they have value, but they they cannot. They are not, it's not cash in the bank. And the investors want to protect his investment. And so to protect his investments, he needs a lot of governance rights to make sure that the, the money is properly managed and the, the, the founders are not going to do stupid things with it. So the problem is that when bad news starts coming, then the equilibrium starts shaking. So the investors, he has two, two um, reactions when bad news starts accumulating. He can either say, well, you know what, you're not my, the, licorn, the unicorn I was uh, dreaming, of, dreaming of, so I'm going to write off the investment and, and walk away, or at least not walk away, but uh, forget about you. Or even worse, uh, use his governance rights to try to, to influence on the management of the company, which, okay, sometimes they do good things, but uh, most of the time I, I hear more horror stories than, uh, than good stories when, when this happens. Uh, the entrepreneur completely uh, changes his mindset. Uh, before, he was like focusing on maximizing the upside. And right now, he's like, oh, bad news are coming. So I'm, I'm the, the value of my shares are still good. So I'm going to try to minimize the downside. And the employees, they lose motivation, and they start leaving the company. So in most of the time, like within three years, 92% of startups fail. So the question is, can we design better organization? So better organization that are more inclusive, that are more robust, and that are more liquid. So one very interesting answer like that, that happened during the last two years was the ICO, right? The, so the initial coin offering. So the, the ICO was very interesting. It was the first attempt to reinvent how companies uh, raise funds. But unfortunately, uh, it was 
plagued with a lot of, uh, lot of problems. And the, the biggest problem is that it was too founder friendly. Basically, with an ICO, you can raise money at a crazy valuation, even though you're early stage, and you give no governance rights. So, so even though if you're a, a, a good entrepreneur and uh, with a lot of honesty, it's good, but it attracted a lot of scammers, and, and, and so this defeated the, the trust of investors. And, but we learned lessons. We learned lessons. ICOs were an incredible uh, experiment. And so what, what did we learn? So first we learned that liquidity is important. Liquidity helps. Why do you start ICO? The, the people were starting ICOs for two things mainly. First, so to, to raise funds and to have uh, uh, liquid tokens that they can use to incentivize their community, so incentivize their employees, incentivize their community, saying, "Look, uh, these tokens are gonna are gonna be valuable." And so, and for the employees, having tokens is very good because they could well, they were able to sell them on the market, and so it's not like stock options. And another another thing we learn with ICOs is that. Um, Founders are looking also for alternate ways of, uh, of fundraising. Like uh, they were looking for, the, they were, I won't say they, they are tired of the VC model, but they know uh, if you started a company, you know that the VC model is, uh, has a lot of drawbacks. And so they were looking for alternative way to, to fundraise. And also we learned that investors are, are okay to trade uh, governance for liquidity. If you say to an investor, look, I'm going to give you zero governance, but uh, you have liquidity, then it's a, it, it's a deal that they are okay to accept. So, so the idea behind continuous organization is like, how can we keep the good parts of ICO and, and, and try to mitigate the bad parts? And so the good parts are obviously liquidity and the, 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 the possibility of incentivizing your community, like fundraising while building your community at the same time. So let's get down to, to how it works. Like, what is a continuous organization? So a continuous organization, I'll start like it's going to be a, a bit dry, but uh, I'll explain with examples. So it's an organization. So any organization can be a for-profit or a non-profit that sets up a decentralized trust. So it's a, it's a smart contract. Uh, and to this decentralized trust that I call so decentralized autonomous trust, uh, DAT, uh, the organization will funnel cash flows to it. And this DAT will issue tokens, and uh, it's a smart contract that issue tokens, and these tokens are basically a claim on the future cash flows that are handled by the DAT. So this is a bit dry, as I said. Let's, let's go down to, to the basic to have a concrete example of how it works. So the only thing that you need to, the, the important thing here is to say, like a continuous organization is any type of organization which, uh, uh, to, and you add to this organization a decentralized trust. So here, here's a setup. So I, I'm going to go a little bit slower. So here, uh, can I have a, here, uh, there's a light or no? I don't know. Maybe. No. So in the center, this is the smart contract. OK, the smart contract. Here you have the stakeholders. You have the organization, community, investors, customers. And this is the, the rules that are implemented in a smart contract, right? So, so this is the, the, the curves. And the organization, you have, you have two things. So the organization has a number of tokens that belongs to the organization. So here it starts with zero. And the organization has a treasury, right? And here, this is the buyback reserve of the, of the, um, of the smart contract. So basically, the smart contract, a bonding curve contract for who knows, who knows the term? I've ever heard the term bonding curve before this conference. Okay, so a bonding curve, uh, contract is a special type of smart contract where when you send money to the smart contracts, you get tokens, and when you send back the tokens, you get back money, okay? And the smart contracts holds your money uh, in a certain way, but it holds it, it doesn't go anywhere, uh, so that you, it can at any time buy back the tokens, okay? So here, in the case of a continuous organization, it's a, it's a special type of bonding curve with two different curves for the buy price and the sell price. So meaning you will buy tokens from the smart contract at the, with the green, the, um, the green line, but you will sell at the price of the blue line, right? And it's important to note, so here, this is not time, okay? So we're not talking about a, a token that can only go up in value, right? This is the supply of token. That's the number of tokens that have been issued by the DAT, right? So, so what happens is that people start investing. So there's more and more 
tokens that, that are being issued, and at one point it, it, uh, it reaches a valuation that starts to be a little bit too high, so people start selling, and so the supply will contract because whenever the tokens are being bought back by the DAT, the smart contracts burns them. Okay, so this is why it's like a, it's like a company who have a always fluctuating number of shares. Okay, if if supply exceeds demand, uh, no, sorry, if demand exceeds supply, new shares are created and sold, and this go, uh, this finances the organization. And if the the supply exceeds demand, then shares are being bought by bought back by the smart contracts, and the supply of shares shrinks. Right? Okay. Concrete example. So. First off, why to give to, to um, investors need to be comfortable uh, to the fact that the organization is committed to actually make the DAT valuable, right? Because it's a, you need to trust the organization that the, it, it's going to put cash flows into the, the smart contracts. So this is why the, what I think will happen at the beginning is the organization will have to um, put some money in the, in the smart contract first to buy the first tokens, okay? And these first tokens also it will be able to use to incentivize its community. So here in this first move, like the, the company, the organization puts 100 ETH into the, the smart contract. So I say Ether, it could be DAI, like uh, the uh, uh, stable coin, so, so, but let's say it's Ether. So it puts uh, 100 Ether, takes back 50 tokens, and from this 100 ether, it gets back uh, 90 because basically it means by doing this, the organization invests in itself, right? So, so it, it puts some money in the, in the smart contract, gets token, and in the end, so it just, this is why like the treasury was 100, it went back to, to 90, so it just spent 10% of the treasury, and it got 50 tokens. Then there's an investor. So somebody was here was like, oh, I heard about this project. I think it's pretty cool. Like the, the valuation right now is very low. I trust the team uh, and I think this is a, a project that I want to invest in. So the investor also put 100 Ether. So we'll get less token, obviously. It will get less token because like, even if you put, low, so the, the graphs are not exact, but rem remember that here at the beginning, 100 token, 100 ETH were, was worth 50 tokens. Here he puts also 100 ETH, but he gets 30 tokens. It's just because like the, the curves now has, has, uh, has increased, right? So the, 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 corpor the corporation have, have bought these first 10 tokens, of these first 50 tokens, and here uh, the investor buys the 30, 30 next tokens, right? And the blue line, what is in blue here is the money that gets uh, in the buyback reserve, gets here. And the green is what gets to finance the organization, okay? Then the, uh, the, the organization starts uh, building its products and let's say there are key uh, stakeholders, like key people in the community that the, the organization wants to incentivize. So it will use part of the tokens that it, it has to give it to the community. Say, look, like you're doing this and it's uh, of great value for me, so, so I don't have much money right now to, to, to pay you, but maybe I can give you some tokens. So give 20 tokens to the community. And then the, the, the person in the community can either decide to keep them, and say, okay, thank you very much, and I'll keep them because I trust that it's gonna uh, increase in value. Or you can also say, well, you know what? I have a little money problems. I want to, to immediately sell them. So it will sell. 20 tokens and get back. So the numbers here are, are fictitious, right? Don't, don't get me on the math here. Uh, 20 tokens and we get back 10 ether. So, and by doing this, what we see is that it's the smart contract, it's the DAT who buys back the tokens, right? It's, uh, it's the blue, the 10 ETH are this blue uh, surface, right? So it's not, it does not affect the treasury of the, of the organization. Okay. And then a customer comes, so, so your organization is selling a product or a service, and uh, let's say that you, you uh, sell a product for 50 ETH. So customer comes and, and says, okay, I'm gonna buy, uh, I, I want to, um, to pay my invoice, and to pay my invoice, so the address to which you will pay it is the address of the smart contract. So he pays 50 ETH to the smart contract, and then what happens is that Unlike an investment, the, the entirety of the 50 ETH are gonna, are gonna go into the, are gonna go into, uh, no, uh, are gonna go into the, no, uh, sorry. 
The, this 50 ETH, there's a, a, a part of it that will go finance the company. So let's say uh, th that's the green surface, and a part of it uh, will go here in the, in the buyback reserve, and it will create new tokens, and these new tokens will be shared with the current token holder. So it's kind of a token dividend that current token holders uh, receive. Okay? So, and what it does also, like once you compute the mass, this is the, the part that is a bit more mathematical, but how it is done means also that not only the, sell pri the, the, the price will go on the right, uh, it will increase, but also the slope of the sell curve is also going to increase. So that means that the more the organization sell product and services, the more the slope of the, of the sell curve increases, the better it is for shareholders, right, for token holders. And then, finally, last move. So let's say that the organization is thriving, okay? It goes very well, and you want to incentivize more and reward your community. And then you can say the organization can say, well, you know what? I'm going to uh, voluntarily put 100 ETH into the, the smart contract, but this time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it's not an investment that I do. I don't want to invest in myself to get token. It's just money that I put to reward the community. So by doing this, all the 100 ETH will, will go into the buyback reserve. So this is why it will increase a lot the slope of the, uh, the sell slope. And the, the tokens that are being minted, uh, created by, by this action, are also um, distributed as token dividends to the, to the shareholders, to the token holders. So that's, that's how, it, how it works. So it, obviously, it's a, it's a, I can understand that it's a bit uh, complicated when you want to understand deep down. What we're, what we're uh, working on right now, because we're going to provide a reference implementation, technical implementation of, uh, of this model, in terms of UX, for the end user, it's totally doable to completely uh, uh, put this into a nice UX that doesn't uh, scare the user. Because the user will never ever see like these curves at all. Here I explain because you are the brave ones who came and want to understand deeply the concept, right? But, but if you, you don't have to understand deeply this concept to, to be able to manipulate continuous organizations. So, just, just so that I know if my explanation is just, and don't, don't be nice with me. Who understood nothing? Don't be nice with me. Like, uh, who understood completely everything what I said? <laughs> uh, you're too nice. Okay, who is like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, thanks. So, so you didn't understand. I, I'll do it again. <laughs> so... Um, so no, but it, it takes a while, and also the, um, we started modeling. I, I will write another blog post on this, like because we obviously it's important when doing continuous organization to be able to model this using Excel or, or Google Sheet or whatever. So so I have a model ready, and I already modeled to see like okay, what does it give in terms of return on investment for investors, and also so right now it's just a bit. Uh, I need to simplify it a little and uh, and make a template out of it, but once I have it, I will make a blog post and I'll share it with everyone so that people can play, play with it, play with it and see, uh, see how it, what it does. So what are the benefits of this? Because why, why all this complicated stuff? So benefits, this is where it gets very interesting because first, it sets yourself, your organization in a continuous fundraising mode, meaning there's no, you don't, you don't, you're not like here saying, okay, I'm going to fundraise right now and I hope to have funds raised uh, in three months. And then you work and then uh, all of a sudden you say, well, now I need more funds and so I'm going to set myself again in fundraising mode and uh, you spend like six months of your time focusing only on this. Here, you, the, the company is in con continuous fundraising. Every time there's more demand than supply, it's going to mint new shares, new tokens, and these tokens are going to finance your, your company. And, uh, and so that's very interesting. It doesn't mean that things will go magical and that you, then you don't have to go see investors. It just means that like, it's the, the, the ball in the, is in the investor's court. Like you say, well, you know what? If you want to invest, like, uh, I, I'm, you can invest anytime. You decide. Is it too risky for you now? Don't invest now. Is it, is it okay? You want to take the risk? Invest now. But, but, so it's very 
uh, you, don't, you don't have this like one time where you need to align everyone and convince all investors to invest all our money at, at the same time. At the same time, VCs also don't have to invest like, a, like a, everything in one go. They can say, well, you know what, right now it's a bit risky, I'll put a little, little money, but uh, I'm going to wait until uh, it gets better and then I'll put more money. And the same, like VCs can also go out more, more easily, like they, they have guaranteed liquidity. Guaranteed liquidity by the, by the smart contract. So guaranteed liquidity doesn't mean that they will necessarily recoup the money they want to recoup, but that means that if, for example, uh, at one point there's a governance crisis and like, uh, the, 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 the founders start doing crazy things, then the investors can say, you know what? Okay, I don't, I don't believe in the company anymore. I don't believe in the organization. I want out. And it can, it can go out uh, without having to, to, to make a lot of trouble. And uh, so that's, that's very uh, important. So this continuous fundraising aspect is, is very, very uh, cool in my, in my opinion because also it gives some, so I will not say that it be, the organization becomes anti-fragile, but kind of, meaning today, if you, when you raise funds, you always have, always have to go up and to the right in terms of valuation. You, you cannot stumble. If you stumble and at one point, like uh, you have bad news and you need to make a, what we call a down round, so you need to raise money at a lower valuation than the previous round, this is where like shit start hitting the fan because uh, it means that all the clauses that you're going to get diluted, uh, it's a very bad signal sent to, to, to the market, so you, your stake of the company will start shrinking like, uh, like snow in the, in the sun. And, um, and so, so this is basically what kills company. Here, what happens? So let's say people are very confident about your company and your organization, and so the, 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 the token price start raising, rising. And then at one point, people say, well, you know what? Yeah, it's uh, like somebody, like one of the founder leaves. So like, oh, why, why did he leave? We didn't know why, it's not. So then people start losing confidence. So they, they're gonna start selling, okay? But when they sell, it's being bought by, by, by the smart contracts. So it doesn't affect your treasury. And then they, they will not sell to, to, and, uh, to zero, okay? At one point, somebody will say, well, you know what, okay, that was a big fact up, but uh, this is a good company. I trust, I trust the team is gonna, is gonna get back on track. And so at one point, the price is gonna start to go up again. And when it goes up, it's more financing for your organization. So this is why, imagine now an organization where there's a lot of volatility, okay? This is the token price of your organization. Every time it goes up, it's financing for your, for your organization. So this is why even like if you have high volatility, it, it is good. It, it, it gives you the financial resources to get through this difficult moment, right? So, so that's, that's a very uh, cool feature. Then, okay, fully liquid tokens. So fully liquid means that there's, there's always, like the, the smart contract acts like a, a, a central bank of your organization. It's your last resort seller. It's your last, last resort buyer. When you want to buy a token from, a, from an organization that is continuous, then the first thing you'll do is look on the secondary market. Is there anyone here who already has a token who wants to sell it to me at a lower price than the, the price of the, of the smart contract? If yes, cool, you can buy it from him. If not, you can buy it directly from the smart contract. And this is when like, the supply of token, one new token gets created. Same thing when you want to sell. When you want to sell, you don't want to sell to the smart contract. That's your last option. You'd, you'd rather find somebody on the market that is ready to, uh, to buy your token at a price that is higher than the price that is the, of the smart contract. So, so this, is, this is why it's fully liquid because even though, even then when you have, there's the, the secondary market is dry, there's nobody selling or nobody buying, you can still, decide to buy or you can still decide to sell. It's attractive to long-term investors because obviously you saw in the curve, like there's a huge spread between the buy price and the sell price. So the worst you can do here is say, you buy, uh, you put 100 ETH and then the, the next day you say, well, you know what, I made a mistake, I want to sell back and there's nobody in the secondary market and you sell back to the smart contract, then you make a huge loss, okay? So this is why you don't invest in a continuous organization to, to, to flip the, the next day, right? You invest because you believe the organization is gonna produce cash flows and it's gonna convince more investors that this is a good organization. So this is why it, by, by design, it is more attractive to long-term investors than to short-term investors. Um, then the tokens, obviously, it's not, it's not a utility token. It's, it's not a utility token, it's not a security token also. It's not a security token because there's no uh, contractual relationship between the organization and the decentralized trust. So, so the organization at any time can say, you know what, I'm not gonna put any more cash flows in the decentralized trust. So obviously if it does this, 
then uh, it breaks the trust and uh, it's going to be a bad buzz and the community is going to, like the, the, the price of the token will go down, but uh, it can do that. So this is why it's not a security. There's no, like uh, the, the organization has no obligation towards the token holder, right? But it's also not a utility because, because these tokens are a claim on the future cash flows handled by the, by the, the trust. So, so this is why we are in between the, uh, the, the two models. And, but it's based on, on real money. Then, like this, you, you probably know, it's the same as ICO, it's permissionless. Like nobody, if I want to invest in the uh, conscious organization, I don't have to go and see the founder and say, let me invest. I can invest uh, in permissionless, uh, permissionless way. Frictionless, because the, the same. So I decide when I want to, when I want to invest and, uh, and I don't need lawyers or, or anybody who make me a contract. And it's supranational, so like crypto, meaning uh, I'm Chinese or uh, I'm from Singapore and I want to invest in a French continuous organization, it's the same, like uh, that I'm French or Singaporean or, or Chinese, it's the same, I can do that. Uh, and another cool aspect of it is it's completely governance agnostic because once you created this decentralized trust, it's immutable, you cannot modify it. So, so, so you'd better choose carefully your parameters at the beginning because you cannot modify it. So what that means is that there's no vote. There's no like, uh, it, it's the governance of your organization is the governance of your organization. If your organization is a nonprofit, then that, the, your governance is a democratic governance of a nonprofit uh, with, I don't know, a president elected every three years. Or if your organization is a for-profit uh, C-Corp, then you have a board of directors and, uh, and that's the governance. So, so this is why this model can be plugged to any type of, of organization. The only thing you need is you need a business model uh, because at one point you need to put cash flows in the, in the decent trust trust. So, so that's that. So, so obviously, it's, uh, I'm very happy that when I, when I wrote the article, like I did not think, uh, I was hoping, but I did not think that it would make the, 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 the tour of the crypto world so fast. So, so, uh, so I'm, I'm very happy that I think it's, uh, it means that there's a, there's a real need. So now we're trying to, to go fast on the next step. So the next steps are what? It's like, first, provide the technical uh, a, a reference technical implementation. So, so don't try to implement this smart contract. Like the math are very precise. Like we're gonna we're gonna provide you with a smart contract that is like fully tested, fully audited, because you don't want to we, you don't want to play with that. So don't try to implement it yourself. You can come to us if you want to help us, and and we'll do it together. But it, it's sensitive, and so we want to we want to provide the community with a reference implementation. And with that, uh, once everything is settled, we're all gonna write a, a, an. ER to, to make a standard, okay, what is a, a conscious organization and to create a, a standard. Uh, we also want to provide regular, regulatory guidance to founders who want to create conscious organizations. So, so we were at the AMF yesterday. So it's still explorat exploratory talks. So, so I cannot say, well, no problem, like, go for it. But the only thing I would say is that it looks, it looks okay. It looks that we're going to be able to create decentralized trust without killing the cool properties of it. Without like, uh, so, so that's, I'm very happy that France uh, is now like a leading uh, country in terms of, uh, of uh, blockchain and crypto regulation. So it seems that France is gonna be very welcome to, to such a model. So to be confirmed, but it, it looks good. Um, we're gonna raise funds. Uh, so we're still like working like, how, why, etc. But well, the idea is really to raise funds to develop the continuous organization ecosystem. Uh, we're going to strengthen, obviously, and improve the theoretical foundation of continuous organization. This is the first work. Uh, there are still things that we can improve in the model. And obviously, we're going to foster the, the continuous organization community uh, worldwide to, I'd say, spread the word and say, well, look, instead of doing an ICO that is too imbalanced, and instead of going on the venture route, maybe you want to do a continuous organization because we think it's a mixed model that is fair and balanced.